that's something that I encounter a lot in my practice. Um, people have experiences with family members who had a particular unpleasant or, or in some cases, a pleasant experience with chemotherapy. And I have a lot of patients who tell me, why would I put, you know, poison in my body? Um, so if I encounter somebody who's had that experience, especially if they have a high risk for recurrence that's seen from their pathology report, it might be the stage of their cancer, then I talk a little bit more about their experience with chemotherapy um, because it may not necessarily uh, mean that that's going to be the experience that they have. Um, so I, I spend myself and with my nurse and also we have a social worker who's part of our care team. We spend a lot of time with patients talking about what their experience has been and try and draw out differences because a lot of times those differences uh, make the the situation that the patient's in completely different from what that family member may have experienced. Uh, you know, a particular example might be a patient that I have who's who would be undergoing treatment for colon cancer, but yet they had an uncle who died of their treat of of lung cancer, and they talked about how they did not tolerate chemo uh, very well. And I explained to patients that that chemo is a blanket term for different drugs, and the side effects are different uh, for different people or and the use of different drugs. And I also explained that if you know if you were treated. Uh, several decades ago, the experience might be completely different than now because we have a lot of really good supportive drugs that help with symptoms like nausea, um, diarrhea, and, and other things that can happen with chemotherapy. So that's one thing I tell patients when they tell me about a bad experience that a family member may have had. Uh, the other part I talk about is uh, trying to really give them maybe a concrete idea of what the benefits of chemotherapy would be especially if they have a high risk for recurrence. And that's where I might use other tools to help them better quantify what the benefits would be so that they can really make an educated decision. Um, but I find that when people have these concerns about chemotherapy, I think spending time talking about what their fears are and investigating, you know, whether those are valid uh, fears because you know, there are certain um, certain genetic uh is particularly some of the chemos I use, genetic um, predispositions to to making people mon not metabolize them well. Um, that, you know, that if, say, they had a family member who had a particular bad reaction to a drug that I would want to be using, I may send additional testing. Um, so really getting to the bottom of what are their fears, what was their experience, um, and seeing if it's something that could potentially happen to them that, you know, that if it seems like it is, then I do further investigation. If it's not, then I I explain to them why that experience would not be likely to happen. And a lot of times I feel that helps people a lot. And I always tell people that that you can try doing the chemotherapy. Um, and if side effects happen, we can do dose adjustments. Um, but I always tell people that I never want the treatment to be worse than the disease. And that's what I think in terms of the big picture. For an interactive tool to learn more about your colon cancer and your personalized treatment options, go to mycoloncancercoach.org.